We heard from Coach Yelko. It sounds like Bryce Anderson is going to play safety for the Aggies this season. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We heard from Coach Elko. He took the podium and spoke to the media. And a lot, a lot of interesting talking points came from Coach Elko and what he had to say at the podium. And the first thing he said, Bryce Anderson is a safety. We recruited him to play safety. We saw him as a safety. We or we see him as a, a safety in this defense. He's not playing nickel. So, you know, there's no beating around the bush. Bryce Anderson could have had a better season last year. You know, I think we can all agree on that. I don't think there's any debate there. I think he's got the potential to be a really, really good football player. I think that Coach Bateman and Coach Elko feel good about what he can bring to the table this year. But I like, let's not pretend. Let's not try and say, well, we have him playing nickel. We're going to leave him there. No. If you want him to play safety, put him at safety. If you think that's where he can best help this football team, do it. And that's what Coach Elko said, and that's what it sounds like they're going to do. And I love that. I mean, there's no, well, Bryce, you spent a, year, a couple years playing nickel. Let's let's leave you there. You know, let's develop you there. No, we're going to play you where you best help this football team and best help yourself for a potential NFL career. And that's what Coach Elko's done. It's going to make this football team better. And this won't be the last time. It's not just going to be Bryce Anderson this happens. Could it be uh, somebody comes in as a – uh, somebody comes in as a left tackle and we go, you know what? You're more of a guard. We're going to need you to play right guard or left guard, whatever. This is going to happen more often. And I like a staff that isn't afraid to say, no, you're going to play this position. I like that a lot. So I loved hearing Coach Elko say that about Bryce Anderson. Um, and I think that, hey, we'll get we'll get into who's been uh, practicing at nickel and who's been playing there. But – um, so when it comes to the safety, Coach Elko mentioned Bryce Anderson, Dalton Brooks, Marcus Ratcliffe, and Jared Kerr as safeties who are standing out, as well as um, the Trey Jones is getting healthy. And he says he feels good about the room where it's, where it's at, where it's going. So so I think, I mean, that's a lot of names there. A lot of a lot of guys who have played, you know, Ratcliffe played a lot of football. Anderson played a lot of football. Brooks, young, talented guy. Kerr played some football. You've got a lot of experienced players in that room now, which is great. I think that that helps, and it's going to be interesting. You know, playing in the secondary, it's so instinctual. Some players have been used to playing nickel or used to playing safety or used to playing outside corner. And I think a lot of it, it's like, here's the deal. I, I like to go back to my baseball background a little bit on this. Um, you know, because I didn't play, when I played football, I was playing offensive line. Um, clearly, but in baseball, you know, I played first base my whole life. The only issue for me was speed. I could have played outfield. I know how to play the outfield. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's, I don't play it every day, but I could have done it. And I think in safety players that can play corner, I think they could play safety. I'm not saying immediately, I'm not saying, Hey, we're going to take, um, we're going to take this player and we're going to, Make them play safety tomorrow in our game. In our game, tomorrow. it's not like that. But I'm saying in an off season, you can develop the skills it takes to change a position. I'm not saying overnight. I'm saying over an off season. So I think that Bryce Anderson, and you know, and he obviously has played all over the secondary in his career, so he has instincts everywhere. But I'm just saying, I think it's a good thing that this staff is comfortable moving folks to different places. That's going to matter, and it's going to – you're going to see that come around more during Coach Elko's tenure here. Um, I found this quote really interesting because it's a player that I wasn't really expecting. So 
Um, and one player I was expecting. Coach Elko says on the portal additions, I think we um, we added a lot of quality. He meant, he uh, mentioned Nick Scorton and Armage Reed Adams as two who are having a really good spring and will have an impact in this fall. We knew that about Scorton, but Armage Reed Adams, the the transfer, could he work into a starting role? And it's funny because if I would had to have guessed, I would have said it was going to be Hinton, but could it be Reed Adams like that? I'm not going to say that would be a surprise or Graham even. You know, I'm not going to say that would be a surprise, but Derek Graham and Hinton were honestly the guys that I was higher on than Armage uh, Reed Adams. But I love it when stuff like this happens. I love it when a player that may, maybe, hey, I haven't been talking enough about, we haven't been talking enough about, and the coaching staff, this guy stepped up, this guy's playing well. I love to hear that because that means that the players we aren't talking about who are kind of, we have Mo in the two deep, the three deep, they could be starters. And all that means is a player that we thought was going to be, you know, eh, is separating themselves as a potential starter. And that's good. That means we have better options than we previously thought. I previously thought. So it's really good to hear that. And then Coach Elko went on to have a few different quotes on Scorton, which we will talk about Scorton as much as humanly possible. He says, to his credit, he's a completely different human right now, talking about what he was, I think, out of high school. Um, what he has done to his body and the work he has put in. He's a grown man playing football right now. All those athletic traits that you liked in high school now exist in the kid that's 280 pounds. And then another quote on Scorton. When uh, we were recruiting him, he was mad at me. Uh, when we were recruiting him, he was mad at me because we wouldn't, we didn't offer him at high school. I told him if I knew he was going to look like this three years later, it would have made my job a lot easier, which that's pretty funny. Um you know, he has, he's, he's come a long way from who he was in high school to who he is now. And that's why he was one of the best pass rushers in the big 10 last year. And he will be one of the best pass rushers in the sec this season. So those are some quotes on Nick Scorton, some things about um, Reed Adams, some things about the safety room. I think it's great to hear. And then I want to talk a little bit about the, um, at nickel. So Coach Elko says that Jaden Hill, Bravian Rogers, and Tariq Chappelle have had some time at nickel so far during spring practice. Who ends up winning that job is going to be really interesting because we thought it was going to be Bryce Anderson. So it's like now we assume Bryce Anderson is going to start at safety and someone we weren't expecting will start at the nickel position. And that is going to be an interesting conversation. You know, a lot of these corners have played inside, have played outside. And I think that's going to help when we talk about, as I just got done talking about the instincts that come into play in the secondary, I think that these guys, a lot of these guys have played all over and that'll help. You know, Tariq Chappelle put a lot of outside corner, but I think he's a versatile um, corner that won't have much issue trying something a little bit different. Um, and then I, I just feel good about the same. The more I hear about the options and who's playing well, and who's moving around, and we got this guy playing here and here. The more I hear Coach Elko talk about the secondary, I feel better. It's no secret. All you everydayers here at Locked on Aggies know how concerned I am about the secondary and the offensive line. Those are my two concerns. But every time I hear Coach Elko talk about the secondary, and I, I know there's a such thing as coach speech, right? That is a real thing. Coach speech is a real thing. Coaches will say, you know, what they want to say to make folks happy. I know that's reality here, but I'm just telling you, I don't think that Coach Elko is a huge coach speech guy. I think if he says something, he means it. That's just the vibe I get early on. And the vibe I'm getting is that he really does think this secondary can be good because if it's not, this team won't be very good. I don't care how good your front seven is. I don't care how good um, your pass rush is. If – you don't have a good secondary. Teams are going to throw the football on you all day long. So that is definitely a, it is a concern for me still, but the more I hear Coach Elko talk about it, I just feel better and better and better and better about it. So I don't know about y'all, but I'm feeling better about this secondary. And like I said, I think this secondary playing better can be a win, you know, a win difference. The offensive line plus the secondary plan better. We're talking about a two-win difference from last year to this year. That's how much, how close we are. We feel good about quarterback. We feel good about running back. We feel good about receiver. We feel good about tight end. feel good about the front seven. It's going to come down to this offensive line 
and the secondary. If those two position groups take a step forward, Texas A&M is going to have a really, really good season this year. I want to talk a little bit about the running back room and some more interesting quotes from Coach Elko that we heard that are going to, hey, who's going to, some players going to be out there, different things like that. A lot of fun stuff to discuss from Coach Elko. And we'll talk about that, especially the running back room coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Game Time. Listen, there is no, no better place to go get tickets than Game Time. Whether it's a sporting event, a comedy, a concert, theater, whatever it might be, there's no better place to go get tickets than Game Time. It is the easiest app to use, the best prices, and as I always say when I talk about Game Time, I love how you can use the app and you can see where your seat is. I love to try different seats in the ballpark or um, at the football field, wherever it is. I love trying different seats. And the Game Time app makes it possible to do that because I can kind of see what it's going to look like. Eh, I don't know if I like sitting there. It shows you your vantage point from where your seat would be if you buy that seat. It's the best app. It is the only place I will buy tickets for the rest of my entire life. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So back to some quotes from Coach Elko. And the first thing I want to talk about is a player that I think Coach Elko is getting excited about. And that is none other than Reuben Owens. He says, Reuben Owens has been good. I knew Reuben a little bit from recruiting. He has, a, he has had a really good spring in terms of doing the things he needs to take his game to the next level. I have a feeling that Reuben Owens is going to separate himself in this running back race. We've just heard a lot, a lot of positive things about him and the way he's playing right now. I have a feeling that you're going to see him. You're going to see him take that step forward and potentially overtake, I think, Le'Veon Moss. I do think that Le'Veon Moss and Ruben Owens are going to separate themselves from the pack. But then I think you're going to see those two guys. Um, you're going to see those two guys separate. And then I think you're going to see Ruben Owens separate from Le'Veon Moss. I just, I know, I mean, listen, Le'Veon Moss was a highly ranked guy too. This is, Le'Veon Moss is, is a great player, but I just, the instincts, the, the, the speed, the elusiveness, it's all, the power, all of it's there for Owens. And I'm not saying it's not for Moss because Moss is a great running back. This is a good problem to have. We have too many really good running backs. I don't want to give any up, but what I'm saying is you got too many. And that's a really solid problem to have. Not a lot of teams have that problem. Not, I mean, a lot of teams are saying, man, I wish we had another running back. We are in trouble. We have one okay guy, and that's it. Texas a goes, we have a handful of incredible running backs that we don't even know what to do with. So, I've got this feeling that Reuben Owens might take over in this running back room and be the guy. And I don't think that would be this huge surprise. I think I would describe it more as not a surprise, but I, I think it would be a positive because we all feel good about Reuben Owens. We all feel like he can be the dude for Texas A&M. He just needed to take that freshman to sophomore year leap, which a lot of five stars do. So I think everything happening with Ruben Owens is exactly what we would have expected to happen for a second-year former five-star. Um, same thing I kind of think we'll see with DJ Hicks. You know, DJ Hicks is the guy who I think is going to ex- take that leap. He's been in the college weight room. He's gotten stronger. He's gone against some SEC offensive linemen. I think DJ Hicks and Ruben Owens are two of those former uh, five-star freshmen that are going to have a really good sophomore season. So I'm excited to see the way that they um, show this year. I want to see how them um, have a good season. So this is an interesting quote, and this is one of those quotes where it's like, read into this, whatever you want to read into it. I'm trying not to overreact or underreact to things in the spring. 
So Coach Elko on AM's offense. I'm not disappointed. It's just unrealistic to assume that in nine practices in a new system that it's going to be humming. I, I, I wish I better understood what that meant. Um, I wish you better, I wish you would have better expanded on that. Like, because to me, that sounds like, well, I think we're gonna get there, but we're not there now. And he's right. I mean, we're talking nine practices. You got to learn this system. It's going to take a little bit of time. It's not just the easiest thing in the world to learn a brand new system. That's something we've talked about here at Locked On Aggies a ton, as you ever dare know. But I wouldn't say that quote concerned me. I would say that quote was a little bit like, well, what do, what do we mean here? What do you mean? Are you concerned about this? Are you, what are we concerned about? What is the problem? Um, and it's, I don't think it's Colin Klein. I think it's the players learning the system and adjusting to learning a new offense, which isn't easy to do. That is where I think the issue is coming from. So I'm not long-term concerned about this. I just, like I said, I would have liked to have uh, heard Coach Elko expand on that a little bit more. So, no, I don't have any offensive concerns going forward. But that's definitely something that I was kind of like, huh, when I first read that. So. Uh, so Coach Elko, you know, of course, as I said, Nick Scorton and Armaj Reed Adams, two transfers that have impressed him. He says that Trey Watson, um, but that he has had a shoulder injury and didn't scrimmage when they scrimmaged yesterday. So Trey Watson's the name, the tight end transfer that I guess has um, stood out as well, which is good to hear. Um, especially you know, as we know what's going on with Donovan Green, his health, he's got to get back on the field. So that's good to hear that another tight end is separating himself. So he says there's a lot of good competition in the secondary. Mark Strickliff, Will Lee, Donovan Saunders, and B.J. Mays, it sounds like, are all competing for roles in that secondary. A lot – exactly. Uh, we didn't even say the name Will Lee, Donovan Saunders, or B.J. Mays when we just talked about the secondary a few minutes ago. That's how many names are competing. That's how many names are in this race, how many talented guys that Coach Elko feels good about are in – seriously in this race, and that's huge. Um. So Coach Elko says – Nine days in, I would describe us as a work in progress, which is to be expected. Very happy with our guys in terms of their mindset, how hard they're working, and the things they're doing to get um, to get this thing going in the right direction. I like when a coach isn't over praising. You know what I mean? It's not like we're awesome. We're the best team ever. We're gonna we're we're gonna do this. The players are the best in the world. You know, keep them humble. Keep your team humble. Does he think that? I'm sure he does. I'm sure that's how he feels. But what I'm kind of getting at here is don't overhype your team. Don't overhype them. Keep them humble. Keep them hungry. Keep them working hard. And I think quotes like that do that. It's like, hey, we're going to be pretty good. We got a lot of, we got a long way to go. The players are working hard and proud of them, but we, we got a long way to go. I think that's a good way to address your team. It's a good way to keep everybody humble, keep everybody working hard. Um, Coach Elko went on to say this about the health of Connor Wigman, which has been a constant theme in press conferences, as it should be when you're talking about your projected starting quarterback. Uh, he's not at hundred percent. He's not going to be at hundred percent coming out of the spring. Don't love that. He's still able to go. And the, that's important for him to get the reps. We have guys out there that are nicked up, but still understand the importance of going out on the practice field. And that's true. I love to hear that. Okay. Right. So Connor Wigman's not hundred percent. Whatever, nothing we can do about that. But I do love to hear that, as we know, he's out there getting these reps. I, I think this makes us feel better that he will be 100% going into the start of the season. Um, but the more I look at this, the more I say to myself, I'm not super concerned about Connor Brigman's health. I just don't want it to affect his his mobility. I love Connor Brigman's ability to run with the football. He's a quarterback who does a really good job of taking off when he feels like there's nothing downfield and he goes, okay, Hey, nothing downfield. I'm not going to force a bad decision. I'm going to pick up four yards and we'll make it second and six or we'll make it third and two. You know what I mean? I like that about Connor Wigman. So if his legs aren't hundred percent, it becomes harder for him to do that. So that is, you know, something to continue to monitor as we've discussed many times here at locked on Aggies. He says in the portal window, if we feel like there is value to be added, we're going to try and take advantage of it. Anytime free agency opens, I love that he says free agency. You're looking to see what's available at what level and what it's worth um, to, for your program. So I think they're going to kind of see, hey, what do we lose? What are we going to gain? Um, what are we going to lose in the portal? And then that's going to kind of decide what they lose will decide what they go get. So 
we'll see. We'll see. The, the window opens, I believe it's the, the 15th or 16th, so it opens here in about five or six days. When that happens, I assume players will play in the spring game. Like some teams that have already had their spring game, players will probably leave the second window opens, but players that haven't, like Texas a ms will, of course, be after um, – the window opens. So you assume the players will play the spring game, see where they're at, and then hit the hit it when that window comes open here in a few days. So that is definitely going to be something to monitor. The Aggies have a huge series coming up against Vandy on the baseball field. We're going to talk about that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. I'm recording this uh, Wednesday evening, which means what is tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen? You hear that? It's the music. It's coming from Augusta. It is the Masters. Um, going to bet on the Masters. I always like to put 10 bucks on two or three golfers to win. It's a ton of fun. It makes it more fun. I'm a huge golf guy. I love to watch the Masters. Um, so my dad and I and buddies will all do that and see what happens. So, you know, baseball, hockey, uh, NBA, and then, of course, the Masters. So if you're into that, go check that out on FanDuel as well. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So the Aggies are getting ready to take on the Vanderbilt Commodores on the baseball field. Listen, Vandy is a very, 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 very good team. And I'll tell you this. Um, number six versus number three, you get them at home, go in this series. I have praised this team time and time again. They've done a good job not fumbling in the midweek. They've done a good job so far in SEC play. Find a way to win this series against a really good baseball team. You know, um, if you do that, you'll be 10 and five in SEC play if you win this series, 11 and four if you sweep, of course. But you know, Vandy has a lot of future MLB players. I mean, that's just the way this team recruits. They play high-quality baseball. They're a really good team, really good coaching staff, all-around great program. They're coming to your place. Beat them. Very simple. Beat them in this series. Um, win game one, I always say, is key. In, in baseball, whether you're on the road, whether you're at home, it's all the same when it comes to keys to a series win. Get out to a hot start all that, but I really like winning game one. I mean, it's just reality. If you win game one, more times than not, you're going to win the series. Win game one, I'm really anxious to see how that game goes because that sets the tone. If you win game one at home, your chances of winning the series are through the roof. Also, the reason we're talking about this series today and not on um, Friday is because tomorrow Brian Smith is going to join us, and we're going to talk a little bit of recruiting. Uh, he's on Longstreet, the, the quarterback. Super highly ranked quarterback is I'm making his decision here in a few days. So we'll have Brian on to see where, where the Aggies stand, what other teams are pushing, and talk about some other recruits. So we'll have Brian on to break down those things, which will be a lot of fun tomorrow. So stay uh, tuned for that show on Friday. It'll be a fun one. Um, but, you know, punch them in the mouth early when it comes to Vandy. Punch them in the mouth early. I think that's a way you, you quiet a crowd. On the road, you want to punch a team in the mouth early to quiet the crowd. At home, you want to punch a team in the mouth early to get your crowd fired up. You know, I'll say this home crowd, Texas A&M fans, be loud. This series is huge. This is a really good Vandy team. This series will get us to the midway point of SEC baseball uh, conference play. This is a series to win and really secure, hey, we are that good. We are that good. Go make some noise. I think, I think the Aggies are – one of, if not the best teams in the SEC, and one of, if not the best teams in all college baseball, this team can win a national championship. Vandy's a good team, but here's the deal. Vandy's the type of team you're going to be playing in Omaha, assuming you get there, a team you're going to be playing in a super regional. So 
if you want to beat a team in Omaha or in a super regional, beat them in regular season, beat them at home, prove you can do it, prove yourself you can do it. I think it's going to make people feel a lot better. So I, um, I'm excited for this baseball series. You all know I love baseball. I love this team so much. Other keys, you know, Monty, Shot, and Appel, stay hot, keep swinging the bat well. Uh, Lavalette, you know, love to see him swing it, uh, just keep swinging it. Love to see your your starters keep shoving on the weekends. I mean, this baseball team is playing great baseball. Now you're going to have to do it against a really good team. Just keep doing what you've been doing, and you will win this series. And we're going to feel really good about this team at the midway point of SEC play. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Like I said, don't forget, we will have Brian Smith on the show, uh, Locked on Recruiting Expert Brian Smith on the show tomorrow to talk about Houston Longstreet and some other Texas A&M recruits. Some big time names will break down on the show tomorrow. So stick around for that. It's going to be a fun one coming up on Friday. Hear about where we stand when it comes to the recruiting trail. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Thank you all so much for being here every single day. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. helps a ton. Hit the like button. Leave a five-star review on podcast platforms. It also helps the show. Everybody have a great rest of your day today, and we will see you tomorrow.